On a graph of the electromagnetic spectrum, visible light for humans is a relatively small group of frequencies near the center of the spectrum. Ultraviolet light is just above the visible blue-violet right side of the visible spectrum on this graph and below the high-energy X-rays to the far right. Along with the visible light that illuminates our world, the sun emits ultraviolet light as well. In deep space, unaffected by the Earth's atmosphere, sunlight is composed of 50% infrared, 40% visible, and 10% ultraviolet light. On the Earth's surface, this distribution changes to 53% infrared, 44% visible, and 3% ultraviolet, with a good majority of the shorter wavelength, high-frequency ultraviolet rays absorbed in the upper and lower atmosphere. In fact, there are three types of UV light defined by their wavelengths and how they react with the atmosphere and our bodies. These are labeled UVA, UVB, and UVC. UVA include wavelengths 315 to 400 nanometers, UVB 280 to 315 nanometers, and UVC 100 to 280 nanometers. Of note, the shorter the wavelength, the higher the wave energy. As such, these are considered the low, medium, and high energy waves of the ultraviolet spectrum, respectively. The short wavelength, high energy UVC frequencies are completely absorbed by the ozone layer and atmosphere and thus do not reach the Earth or our skin surface. The medium wavelength, medium energy UVB frequencies are mostly blocked by the ozone layer and any cloud cover. The long wavelength, low energy UVA frequencies are essentially unaffected by the ozone layer and thus make up 95% of the UV light that reaches the Earth's surface. So as we stand on the Earth's surface on a bright sunny day, our uncovered skin is constantly bombarded by the UVA and UVB rays that make it through the atmosphere. The relatively high energy UVB waves deposit their energy in the first few millimeters of the skin and thus are completely absorbed by the epidermis. While they are a relatively small percentage of the actual UVA radiation our skin encounters, these are the rays that cause the redness and pain associated with a sunburn. The low energy UVA rays on the other hand travel deeper through the tissues past the epidermis, and deposit most of their energy in the collagen network of the dermal layer. This collagen network is what keeps our skin supple, smooth, and soft. As such, while the UVA rays don't give us the pain and redness that we associate with excessive sun exposure, they are responsible for the wrinkling and premature skin aging we see in our sun-worshipping friends of our youth. There are many different ways to protect our skin from excessive UV radiation. The simplest is our clothing. Hats, glasses, and shirts provide a physical barrier to the sun's rays and limit our UV exposure. In fact, some clothing actually has an ultraviolet protection factor, or UPF rating, that quantifies the amount of protection provided, similar to the SPF rating for liquid and spray sunscreens. Clothing with a UPF rating of 100 allows only 1 one-hundredth or 1% 1 of the surrounding UV radiation to reach the skin. However, for those of us that want to play on the beach or jump in the water, covering ourselves with heavy, ultraviolet blocking clothing is probably not an option. Liquid cream or spray sunscreen afford us the necessary UV protection without the restrictions of a physical barrier. These applied sunscreens come in two chemical formulations, organic and inorganic. The inorganic are simple mineral pigments like zinc oxide or titanium dioxide which are bright white powders that can be emulsified into a cream or ointment. A sunscreen labeled organic does not mean that it was produced without pesticides, antibiotics, or hormones like our meats, fruits, and vegetables, but that it starts with a carbon backbone on which other atoms are attached, mainly hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, or another carbon atom. When we apply our sunscreen, the inorganic compounds like zinc oxide and titanium dioxide are usually brightly colored and remain visible on the skin surface. 
These formulations are generally considered barrier sunscreens as they seem to predominantly reflect or scatter UV light away from the skin. However, newer zinc and titanium-based sunscreens are micronized, also referred to as nanoparticles of zinc oxide or titanium dioxide, and actually become invisible when rubbed on as micronization appears to reduce the scatter and reflectivity of the visible portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. On the other hand, the organic or chemical sunscreens are either clear sprays or white lotions that always produce an invisible UV protective layer on the skin surface when properly applied. While this is great for showing off that rocking beach bod, since the human eye can't detect light in the UV spectrum, we can't see how these compounds actually protect us from the sun. But we can use our digital technologies to help us out. For reference purposes, this is the same scene shot with three digital cameras tuned to the visible, ultraviolet, and infrared portions of the spectrum, respectively. We all recognize the standard image in the center tuned to the visible frequencies. The image to the right shows the dark sky and water, indicating absorption of the IR frequencies in these locations, whereas the leaves of the trees almost completely reflect the infrared frequencies and thus show up bright white. The image to the left shows the UV spectrum. Water reflects and the sky transmits most of the UV light and shows up bright, whereas the leaves of the trees absorb a good portion of the UV light for photosynthesis and show up relatively dark. Notice that, compared to the other two images, the UV picture is what we call photon-starved, being somewhat blurry with less contrast resolution. This makes sense considering that UV light only accounts for 3% of the total light energy reaching the Earth's surface, with 44% being visible and 53% infrared. As we are interested in the relative absorption and reflection of the visible, ultraviolet, and infrared portions of the spectrum, let's convert the center image to black and white so we're comparing apples to apples. The standard black and white movie filmed in the visible spectrum is on the left and the ultraviolet movie on the right. As we apply a UV absorbing sunscreen to our skin, the white color eventually fades and becomes invisible to the naked eye. However, when filmed with the UV camera, we can see a black spot on the face indicating complete absorption of the UV frequencies. Similarly, a spray absorptive sunscreen produces a visible glistening white shimmer on the skin surface when initially applied, while the UV camera again shows almost complete absorption of the UV frequencies. For comparison, here are visible and UV images of the mineral sunscreens containing micronized zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. As you can see, the area appears slightly white on the visible spectrum when initially applied and quickly fades to invisible as the product is rubbed into the skin. On the UV spectrum, it's difficult to notice any significant change at all. Unlike the previous two absorptive organic products, the mineral sunscreens are more reflective and in this case reflectivity is similar to the skin itself and therefore difficult to see with UV photography. However, if we apply the mineral sunscreen over top of a previously applied absorptive product, we can see the grayish color on the skin indicating some degree of reflectivity. There are many organic molecules that are used to absorb UV light in over-the-counter sunscreen formulations, including oxybenzone. The chemical formula for oxybenzone is C14H12O3, and the molecule contains two hexagonal carbon polygons called benzene rings. In fact, all of these organic sunscreen molecules contain at least one benzene ring. The benzene ring is an interesting structure with six carbon atoms arranged in a closed hexagon. In its simplest form, a single hydrogen atom is attached to each of the carbons with a chemical formula of C6H6. In addition, the carbon atoms are connected to each other with alternating single and double bonds. When double bonds are separated by a single bond, they are referred to as conjugated double bonds, of which benzene has three. 
These bonds are not static and actually rotate around the hexagon all the while maintaining their alternating pattern. As such, there are a number of symbols used to represent the benzene ring in organic chemistry including the ball and stick, the simplified hexagon indicating a carbon atom at each apex and alternating single and double bonds, and finally, the circle inside the hexagon indicating the dynamic nature of the conjugated double bonds. In oxybenzone and the other UV-absorbing molecules, these conjugated double bonds are the key to their skin-protecting properties. In addition to the three conjugated double bonds of each of the benzene rings, an additional conjugated bond is seen on the connector between the rings. Not to get into too much organic chemistry detail, but remember that all of these molecules have to obey certain rules of chemical bonds. Specifically, each of the carbon atoms has to have four connections oxygen, two connections, and hydrogen, one connection to other atoms in the molecule. Whatever we do to the molecule, the requisite connections to each of the atoms has to be maintained. In the presence of UV light, these molecules absorb and temporarily store the light energy by changing the configuration of the molecule itself. We'll temporarily stop the alternating conjugated bonds in the left ring to demonstrate the change. As the UV energy is absorbed, the conjugated double bonds between carbons 1 and 2 of the benzene ring moves between carbon 2 and the carbon connecting the two rings. To maintain the requisite four bonds to each of the carbon atoms, the double bond between the central carbon and oxygen changes to a single bond. Similarly, the single bond off of the carbon 1 to the hydroxyl group changes to a double bond. Finally, the hydrogen atom on the hydroxyl group off of carbon 1 moves to the oxygen off of the central connecting carbon, completing the requisite 4 bonds per carbon, 2 bonds per oxygen, and 1 bond per hydrogen atom. This process is referred to as photoenolization and is the basis for UV absorption in all organic sunscreen molecules. This high energy configuration is inherently unstable and the molecule will quickly revert back to its baseline state while dissipating the previously absorbed light energy in the form of heat. So if you ever felt that spray sunscreens make you hot on a cloudless day with lots of UV light, you may be right. As mentioned previously, the efficacy of various sunscreens are measured by their sun protection factor or SPF. In addition, the SPF rating only refers to the product's ability to block the sunburn causing UVB rays of the electromagnetic spectrum and provides no information on the product's ability to block the more abundant UVA rays. The SPF label gives a rough estimate of the time factor the product provides sun protection. For instance, if you exposed your unprotected skin to the sun for 10 minutes, an SPF 15 sunscreen would allow you to stay in the sun for 150 minutes and receive the same UVB dose to the skin surface. SPF 30 would allow 300 minutes with the same exposure. However, with regard to the product's ability to block UVB rays, the SPF scale is not linear. SPF of 10 blocks 90% of UV rays, SPF 15 blocks 93%, SPF 30, 97%, and SPF 50, 99% of the sunburn causing UVB rays. These numbers assume adequate application of the product. In reality, it's estimated that most consumers use one quarter to one half of the requisite amount necessary to provide the maximum rated protection. Again, under application does not give a linear reduction in sun protection. A half application reduces the effective SPF by the square root of the rated value. In other words, a half application of an SPF 30 sunscreen only provides an effective SPF of 5.5. Remember, SPF only refers to the product's ability to block the UVB rays and prevent the physical effects of a sunburn. To maximize skin protection, you should select a sunscreen product labeled Broad Spectrum which indicates that it is formulated to block both the UVA and UVB rays. Now we don't want you to walk away from our time together thinking that the sun is all bad. In fact, as you will see in the video on vitamin D on the same YouTube channel, a few minutes of unprotected sun exposure during midday is actually quite beneficial. However, 
for longer periods in the sun to maintain skin health, apply your broad spectrum sunscreen with a minimum SPF of 30 at least every two hours or more depending on your activity or time in the water. We'll see you next time.